بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم ولا فهم لنا إلا ما فهمتنا إنك أنت الجواد الكريم so brothers uh, the subject of Ruqya is very important because many people are suffering and stuck in their lives for years and looking everywhere not finding solutions and many of them fall into shirk knowing or not knowingly and many people many times this shirk is hidden by deen by religion so it is religious people who are supposed to know and teach religion that are doing shirk so how can poor normal people know about it so this is why there must be an Islamic solution to this problem. So, uh, first of all, well, shir, uh, sihir and jinn problems are a reality. It is not just stories or weakness, because Allah Taala says, "Wa min shari nafathati fil uqad." We ask Allah to protect us from the evil of those who blow on the knots. So it is sorcerers. Uh, so if they will take your hair, make knots, read satanic things, so one could say. How can that harm me? What will that do to me? But Allah is telling us its harm is a reality. It can attach one's life so that he will not work anymore. It can attach a woman's womb so she will not have any more children. It can attach a student's mind so he will not understand anything at school. As Allah is giving us prayers to protect ourselves and to cure ourselves, that means it does exist. Also, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says, وَيَوْمَ نَحْشُرُهُمْ جَمِيعًا يَا مَعْشَرَ الْجِنِّ قَدْ اسْتَكْثَرْتُ مِنَ الْإِنسِ The day we gather them all. Oh, you jinns, you have too much abused of humans. That means that on Day of Judgment, many people are going to complain to Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala that the jinns ruined our life, made us ill, made us crazy, made our children disabled, uh, split our couples, etc. And Allah Ta'ala is going to ask the jinns, why did you do all that? Uh, what's wrong? What happened? Why did you harm the men uh, in, the, in this way? And the jinns will say, no, it is the men who came looking for problems with us, who ask our protection, who ask our services, give us sacrifices. And when they got what they want, they did not fulfill their engagements with us. And it is also the people who went and paid the sahir to send us to harm people. So we did not go harm people in the first place. They are the ones who came to fetch for problems with us. And Allah Ta'ala is going to make justice on the day of Qiyamah between men and jinn. So this shows that also jinn problem is a reality. So now, how can you know that you have a problem from jinn and sihr and ayn? How to make the difference between these problems and common problems of life? Uh, common health problems, common mental problems, common uh, uh, life problems. So there are four uh, symptoms that show you this is something coming from sihr or jinn or ayn. So the first symptom is blockages in life unusual and repeated blockages. You can't get a job, you can't keep your money, you can't get married, you can't have children, you can't study, you can't pass examination. Whatever you're trying to do, it's not uh, uh, leading. Uh, what, uh, when people uh, promise to help you, they won't help you, so your life is blocked. Things are happening in an unusual way and repeated, repeatedly every time the same thing. So that you yourself, you cannot say this is bad luck. Uh, until you know it's going to happen again. It's not going to work again because so many times it's been the same thing happening. So there is an invisible power that is blocking your life from going forward and that is sihr. So this is the first one. It's what Allah says, al-uqad, the knots. That means they tied your life by sihr. So you cannot go forward. And the second symptom is unusual health problems. So you have pains, you have uh, funny diseases, you go to doctors, they don't understand, they take analysis, they don't find anything, you take medicine, it's not going, and you stay like that for years. For example, if you eat sihir, it's going to give you pain in your stomach. Uh, and the doctors don't understand, and they give you medicine, it can, uh, it can go a bit better, then it comes back, it can, you can go to surgery, but the problem is still here, and for years. So what's happening with your stomach, with your intestines? They're not understanding. I think it's just sihr that you have eaten. And also, if you walk on sihr, it can give you pain in your legs or heaviness, or uh, uh, skin problems, eczema, which is called psoriasis. 
So, so psoriasis is eczema that comes and spreads on the body and changes places. Sometimes it is itching, sometimes it is bleeding, sometimes it's having pus and they're not understanding at all. They don't find any reason to this to come. They don't understand why it is in these different ways and they have no clue for it. And that comes when someone has touched the sihr. Mostly it, he walks on it and it could be an accident. You just walk somewhere, you walk on sihr. It could be put on your way in front of your house or in front of your business and every time you're passing it's, uh, it's uh, coming into you. And there are many different uh, illness that are due to sihr and jinn as Allah Taala says like the one who is shaked by shaitan being possessed uh, like possession and uh, um, uh, crisis of uh, um, mashallah uh, how do you say uh, mental crisis, physical crisis uh, due to jinns uh, possession due to jinns and the third symptom is unusual mental states you get angry too much, mashallah, or you get uh, depressed, you get sad too much, or you are uh, anxious, uh, you ha you're having fears, or you can't concentrate, you can't memorize, you can't fo focus on something, or you are hearing voices, seeing things, and it can go all the way to madness. I give you an example, some time ago a couple came to me and the lady told me she was seeing blood in her dreams and I told her that means they made sihir with your menses blood and when they do that to a woman it will change her blood, that means it will change her feelings uh, if her husband speaks, she, it makes her nervous, if he wants to touch her she cannot bear it she told me that's exactly what's happening to me. I told her that's what Allah Ta'ala has said. They learn from them how to separate a man from his wife. So a couple was fine and suddenly uh, starts arguing, shouting, saying bad things, talking about divorce. Uh, women cannot sleep with her husband. She, she has too much pain or something is re, uh, making her run away from her husband. With no, uh, with no reason, and that is seher. So that is the third uh, symptom, is unusual mental states. And the fourth symptom is nightmares. So what they do as seher or jinn will appear in your dreams. It naturally comes in your dreams. For example, if they do seher, they put it in a grave, or they put it in a graveyard. So that is to attract someone to death. So you will be feeling like a dead person, always tired. You just want to lie down. Even if you sleep, you're always tired. And you don't have any more pleasure in life. You, you don't have any more hope of something. And you're thinking about death. And you, and you start dreaming about dead people. So either dead people, you see them alive. Or live people, you see them dead. Or you see yourself dead. Or you see graves in your dream. Or you see funerals. So by any means, you see things linked to death. Uh, because they have taken your photo or your hair or your clothes, they worked on it and they put it in a graveyard. So it is symbolically as if they have put you in the graveyard. And it is having that effect of death on you. When, for example, they put the sihir in water and they put it in water so your life will get ruined, like water going away, or as if you're building something in the water, so whatever you try to build, the water is removing it, or, or that your money will go like water, so when you get money, it's like you're taking water by the time you ha you raise your hands up it's uh, it's already empty and this is how you and you'll be dreaming about water so you can see rivers you can see yourself crossing rivers you can see rain falling on you you can see yourself swimming or getting drowned or a tsunami by any means you'll be seeing water in your dreams if they put sihir in a high place like in a tree or a, a mountain that is meant to take your mental over the reality. So you'll be imagining things like fearing things or doubting on things, uh, getting confused, but you cannot concentrate on essential things and elaborate uh, uh, constructive thinking. You'll always be uh, wondering and thinking like in the clouds. And that will also envelop your life, so you'll be turning around in your life. Instead of going forward, you'll go turn round and round, and every time come back to your starting point. And you'll be dreaming about heights. You see yourself climbing, or flying, or going down, or falling, or slipping by any means, or in an airplane, you're going to see those things. So this is the fourth symptom of Sihar and Jin and Ain. It is bad dreams. So, so this is how you can know 
that you have a problem of jinn and sihr and ayn. Uh, and the common point between these four symptoms is the difference between what is normal and not normal. So when your blockages are unusual and repeated, you know this is not normal. When your health problem is not understandable by medicine, so you know there's something that's not normal. Because we all know that today medicine is so much advanced that there's not any slightest thing they cannot see. So if something is happening they don't understand, so it, it is probably caused by sihr or jinn or ayn and mentally mental unusual states i mean if a couple is fighting because the lady is wasting too much money or she's uh, passing too much time on telephone with her friends and not making food so you understand or if the man is coming late or doing some, some bad things like drinking so it is normal there's going to be argument but as for nothing and they start giving me a glass of water why are you talking to me like that and starts arguing for nothing when you come to see there's nothing uh, so that is what is unusual so um, if you see that what can you do about it so I'm going to give you a way of treatment that anyone can do inshallah anyone can do this anyone that is praying that is Muslim can do this so try to take note of the verses and to understand how it's going to do. If you see that, you take some water, like a gallon of 20 liters of water, you fill it from the tap, and you read on it, Fatiha, Ayat al-Kursi, Qul huwa Allahu ahad, al-Falaq, al-Nas, plus three special verses to remove the sihr. It is the verses of Musa alayhi salam, with the sources of Fir'aun, where Allah says that Allah Ta'ala breaks the sihr by his words. It is in Surah Al-A'raf, Wa awhayna ila Musa an alqi asaka verses 117 to 122. And in Surah Yunus, falamma alqa wa qala Musa ma jaytum bihi sihr 81 and 82. And in Surah Taha, qulna la takhaf inna ka anta al-a'la from 68 to 70. So all these verses you are going to read 11 times. Fatiha, ayat al-kursi, qulhu Allah ahad al-falaq al-nas al-a'raf 117 to 122. And Yunus 81-82 and uh, Taha 68-70. to 70. Each one you read 11 times. When you have read that on the water, that water is going to remove the sihr, the jinn and the ayn by the grace of Allah Taala. So how are you going to use it? You're going to drink from it. You're going to bathe with it every night. You take uh, a liter and a half, a bottle or a kettle anyway of a liter and a half and you empty it on you you can heat it first if you want to in the microwave or anyhow uh, and you can wash in the shower or the uh, bath but you have to put a big basin to collect the water to throw it outside in the garden so it does not go with the waste and you're going to wash this way for 12 days and also spray your house with that water so you spray the walls the roof the ground and the doors and the windows all the house you can put the water in a sprayer to spray the house. If you have a business or a shop or a whatever uh, uh, workplace or uh, um, cars, vehicles that are not working because of sihr, so you just have to spray them all and that's going to go. So what must you understand about this method is that reading Quran in water to drink and wash, bathe and to spray the house is much more efficient than only reading in the house. The difference between the two, it is as if you are hot and you're cooling yourself down with a fan. And now you're cooling yourself down with a shower. So the shower is going to cool you down much more than the fan. You see? So this is how reading Quran in the water to drink, bathe and spray your house is much more efficient than simply reading in the house. Uh, and so the protections you can see in Sunnah is by reading on oneself and wiping on oneself. But once you are hit, the protection is not enough. Now you need the treatment to remove the thing that has come on you. And that is why you have to read on water and do go through this procedure. And if uh, you can also, when you read on water, read on oil. So you take a bottle of uh, Habba Sauda oil or olive oil or any kind of massage oil or Shibata and you, you read on it at the same time with the water. After you wash with that water, you're going to massage your body with that oil. And especially the places where you have pain or you have skin problems. And uh, as long as that oil is staying on your skin, so the Quran is continue 
is continuing to work, working on you. So you better do it before sleeping so that all night long the Quran will continue working on you. Uh, if also you have stomach problems, stomach pains, and you think you might have eaten sihr, so you're going to get some sana leaves. Uh, sana is leaves that Rasulullah has recommended. He said, Alaykum bis sana, walaw marra fi sana, drink sana even once a year, and that gives diarrhea that empties the stomach. So you're going to boil one full tablespoon of sana leaves with half a liter of Quranic water. Boil it for 10 minutes, and then you drink it in the morning on an empty stomach. And that's going to empty your stomach. If you have eaten sihr, it's going to remove it and give you pain. Because that sihr sticks in the stomach and intestines like glue. So it is like you are, the, uh, you are scraping glue from your skin. It's going to pain you. And especially that is already paining. So it's going to give you lots of pain. If it does give you pain, so that means you have eaten the sihr. So you com continue doing it every day until it gives you no pain. So the day you drink it and it gives you diarrhea without pain, Pain, you know it has finished, you don't have any more sihr in your stomach. So this is very, very easy to do, it is costless and it is very, very efficient. So am I telling you all this procedure of water and oil and sana, it is very simple, anyone can do it. Anyone can do it. So if you see that your business is not working correctly, uh, that your money is getting wasted, that your wife has, uh, uh, has the pains that are not normal, if your child is screaming in the night, so you're going to hold him and read that Quran on him and read also on water and give him to drink and bathe and spray your house and it will remove a lot of your problems. Even if it does not all go, it will be much less much less and if you just continue continue this way inshallah it will all come to an end uh, so am i really encouraging everybody to do this in case you see these kinds of things happening to you also these verses i have given you they are the essential verses of ruqya they are the essential verses of treatment you can add much more verses that are in hadith or in ruqya books or in uh, manzil or any verses you want or any dua of Prophet ﷺ, the more you add, or you can read more than 11 times, so the more you add it, the more it will be efficient, the more the strength, the power of Quran will add into that water. So now, there is more to learn about Ruqya. We use, for example, cupping hijama to remove sihr, as Rasulullah ﷺ said, uh, hijama shifa min arba'ina da. Hijama is a remedy for 40 diseases, and in another hadith, ilaja min sihr, it is a remedy for sihr. So to remove sihr by hijama, you have to put the hijama in the places where there is the problem, and in the same time, read the Quran on the person. So the Quran is going to burn uh, the jinn and sihr and the hijama, the cupping is going to, to remove it out. So to give you an image, it's like if you're fighting with a ghost, so if you punch him or stab him, that will not do anything to him. But if you can get a, a powerful hoover to uh, suck him and to put him in something, so you can catch him and he cannot resist that. So this is how the cupping is very, very efficient to, uh, to remove jinn and sihr problems. Uh, so there's other things to learn. So Alhamdulillah, we have established a Rokia Center in uh, London since uh, two months and something, and it is uh, permanently open for treatments and also for training. So we, and so far, this uh, center is run by people who came with me from France and from Belgium. So the, we want to put, we would like to put an end to this situation and train local people to do that. Alhamdulillah, we have so far over 60 centers throughout 20 countries in the world. Alhamdulillah. And uh, we are continuing, inshallah. So this I am, I am spending all the year long practically doing that, going and uh, making campaigns on the Rokhi, etc. So, well, in some cultures, people are very much afraid of jinns. And this is wrong. You should not be afraid of jinns. Because Allah Ta'ala has made men over jinns. Because Allah Ta'ala said, Inni ja'inun fil ardi khalifa. Uh, I'm putting a caliph on earth. Jinns were making a mess on earth. And Allah said, now I'm going to put someone to tie this, to tie this, uh, this up. Uh, and this is us. So we, Allah has made us dominating jinns. So we should not be afraid of them. We should not be led by them. We should not be asking their help or needing them or uh, accepting their conditions, all that stuff. And all this comes just by ignorance. But actually, uh, 
However, a jinn would attack a man, you can always dominate him, you can even kill him. I'm going to give you a few examples, you have got to the next point, but it is just to show you that you should not be afraid of this. And you should not be afraid of sihr. Uh, because the sahir is someone, as the brother was explaining, who has given his soul to shaitan, as you say. He has given his soul to shaitan. I'll give you just an example. Once I was making ruqya on someone and the jinn spoke and I told him, what's your religion? He said, I am Muslim. So I said, how could you be Muslim and working for a sahir, for a sorcerer? He said, but the sorcerer I'm working for, he's an imam. I said, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Anyway, as you know, he is a sorcerer, so you should not work for him. He said, yes, indeed, the pact that the imam did with the shaitan is not to pray Salat al dhuhr So he makes all prayers, but does not make Salat al dhuhr You see, this is the arrangement between him and the bliss. So the sorcerer is someone who does a satanic act to engage himself with Iblis. Uh, and and because of that, shaitan will give him some power over jinns and to make sorcery. So the power of the sahir is a small portion of the power of Iblis. You see? So should the Muslim be afraid of Iblis? So should you be afraid of the sahir? You shouldn't. You shouldn't be afraid of them. Uh, and look at this sahir. They are not afraid of Allah and not afraid of people. And they are so confident in themselves. They're so confident in their power, he can tell you, as long as I'm alive, you'll never get married, you'll never do this, you'll never have children. They're confident in their power. So where is our confidence in Allah? Where is our confidence in Quran? You see? So if we are afraid of them and we don't know want to get involved in this, subhanallah, we have the Quran. Huh? But we don't know, know how to use it. And those who have shaitan, they know how to use it. Uh, I give you an example also. This happened in Togo. Someone went preaching in a village. And there was idol worshipper. There were Muslims. He went to preach the idol worshippers to call them to Islam. And he slept in the mosque. And when he woke up in the morning, he was in the river. He found himself in the river. Uh, so he ran away immediately. He did not come back to, to understand what happened. So you see, so the idol worshippers won. Now they say our idols are strong. Where is his Allah? Where is his Rasulullah? So saying, where is his this and that? Where is his prayers? This is what we can do. So they can show the power shaitan can, gives them. Can we show what Allah is giving us? So if you cannot show, so they are beating us. Uh, it's not that Islam is weak. It is we are weak. But we have it. We can use it. We can use it and it can work. Uh, it works by the power of Allah Taala. Anyway, this is what we are. What we are. Why we are here for? But if no one of us, if no no one is willing to to do it and to confront them, so we will all be lost. May Allah Taala help us. So our main purpose is to train people and to establish rokia centers so that it will be a solution for the community. Uh, Subhanallah. So many people do shirk. Uh, do shirk and la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. So how can, I don't understand why shirk people are not afraid and people who believe in Allah should be afraid of what? Uh, la ilaha illallah. So we are here for that. So I was telling you that jinns, how, whatever happens, we can always dominate them. For example, most often jinns attack people in the dream. So you are sleeping, you see a snake attacking you or a dog or a bull or people or militaries or a monster or whatever. So in your dream, if you remember to say Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, to recite Quran, that will stop him, he's going to run away. So what must you do? You must catch him first and then read Ayatul Kursi, read and read until he's dead. And if he's dead in the dream, he's really dead, it's finished. And how can you remember in your dream to catch him and to read? You must prepare yourself before sleeping. So if anyone is making nightmares or you know someone making nightmares, you're going to tell him, prepare yourself before sleeping. You read Ayatul Kursi, then you read Qul Hulu Had Al Falaq Al Nas and, and wipe yourself with it three times and then you add Aina Ma Takunu it is Baqarah 148 that means wherever you are Allah will bring you all because Allah is almighty 
and you repeat that and you ask Allah Taala that these jinns that are harming you or these people that are making sihr to you that Allah should bring them to you in your dream and give you the power to beat them and you go to sleep with the anger to catch them as you are going to hunt them and as soon as you see them you're going to beat them or read Quran until they're finished and you repeat that every night until it is all clear there's no one after you and Alhamdulillah in any country I go I preach this and after one day or two someone will tell me yes I did what you what you said and I caught them in the dream and I was reading some died some was burned some run away whatever anyway he see how easy it is to do that and two days ago someone told me he did it here in London too so Alhamdulillah uh, because people are always surprised how can we be in dream and taking decisions and controlling our dreams it is a, a question of preparing yourself before sleeping and even if it is someone else having the nightmares if it is your son screaming by night or your wife that sees someone coming to sleep with her in her dreams or your mother hearing voices confusing her mind you can yourself make the dua before sleeping and ask Allah to bring you his jinn in your dream and you will catch him and kill him and the person will be relieved and even if it is the person who's making sihr to you that you see in your dreams if you beat him or kill him his evil will return back onto him and you have many many stories on this topic I'll just tell you two of them there was a young girl it was her step grandmother that was making sihir to her and the old lady came in her dream with a knife to stab her and the girl took the knife off her and stabbed her and she woke up uh, the, lady, the old lady woke up in the morning and she was vomiting blood for three days then she passed away then she died I also had uh, I also had a patient that was an idol worshipper and he left the idols he did not choose to become Muslim or Christian so he did not have any religion so he told me he saw in his dream a bull attacking him uh, and many of our patients see these bulls attacking them and you're going to see what it is so he saw the bull attacking him so he ran away and he hid behind a tree and the bull passed and it was a head of a bull and a body of a human being so when you, he saw it was a body of a human being he tackled him with his leg and the, girl, the guy fell down and his mask of bull fell down and he saw the person making sihir to him so he took the mask the head of the bull and he put it on his head and he started chasing him and now the other one ran away until he ran into a house and there was a court in the house and he saw all the sorcerers of the, of the village in that court and they were telling him did you beat him did you catch him they're not understanding that now he was running away from the other one so you see this man is not even Muslim he does not even have Iman uh, but the way he was attacked he defended himself until he sent back the sihr to those who did, who did it uh, so you see the, the other ones are not believer he is not believer so they confronted the one who had who had more uh, determination who had a stronger uh, personality he beat the other one that's it so if you are believing in Allah and reading Quran and praying and asking Allah to help you you can also do it if you know people or you don't know but you think people made sihr to you so just pray Allah to help you it is Dawat al that you are oppressed and you're asking Allah to help you and to give you the power to beat them in your dream because you cannot go to court against them you cannot do anything uh, and they're making Sihar and spending money working with shaitan to destroy a couple, to destroy business, to destroy children. So you should ask Allah Ta'ala to punish them. Actually, you cannot forgive them because Allah Ta'ala la yaghfiru an yushraka bihi does not forgive shirk. Uh, and they are working with shaitan so even if you forgive them Allah will not forgive them they are going to hell so what is good for them is that Allah Ta'ala punishes them and that could be a cause for them to make tawbah to repent or anyway to stop uh, and if each one that is victim victim could make dua so that Allah will punish them that will we will, that will finish them off easily and quickly inshallah so do that and ask Allah to, ta to bring them in your dream and just beat them up and then you will hear the news what happened to who inshallah I'll give you a second case of jinn uh, some people when they're sleeping or about to sleep they feel something pressurizing them paralyzing them so they can't move they can't speak and sometimes they can't even breathe and that is jinns also attacking people so if you feel that what are you going to do if you feel you're sleeping or about to sleep and you feel there's something a big force paralyzing you first of all you're going to catch him how can you catch him when you are paralyzed yourself you're going to hold your hands just try make try to close your hands just try to uh, to grip your hands 
with the intention of catching him. Once you have done that, you start reading in your mind. As your tongue is attached, you just leave the tongue, read in your mind, Allahu la ilaha illahu al hayyul qayyum, until your tongue is released, and continue reading with your tongue by loud voice and catch him, don't let him go, and read, read until he's dead, and it is finished. Uh, maybe he's dead, maybe he's run away, but in both cases he will not come back. You see how simple it is. Well, this is how. However, a jinn would attack a person, you can always beat him, you can even kill him. Um, now, uh, I'm going to talk, I will, uh, I'm going to make it a bit shorter than usual because we still have to go somewhere else for Maghrib. I'm really sorry that we arrived so late. I may, may Allah Ta'ala help us. So the next point actually is protections. Well, I'll say it anyway. So how to protect yourself from jinn, sihr and ayn? You must read Qul Allah wa Had al-Falaq al-Nas three times after Subh, three times after Maghrib, three times before sleeping. And Ayat al-Kursi after each prayer and before sleeping. And A'udhu bi kalimati Allah tammati min sharri ma khalaq. Bismillah al-Ladhi la yadurru ma asmi shayun fil ardi wa la fi samai wa huwa samil three times after Subh and after Maghrib and also say Bismillah at five moments when entering the house before eating before taking your clothes off before going to the toilet and before having relation with your wife or husband and in these five moments there is important dua of Prophet Sallallahu one should learn and say but even if you don't know at least say Bismillah and all those who live in your house teach them to say Bismillah at those moments now you must not leave in your house photo or statue of something alive exhibited in the house because that brings jinns and shayateen to enter the house and gets uh, gets angels to run away from the house. So even if it is the photo of your parents or your wedding or your children, just put it in the album, don't leave it, leave it exposed. And you also must mention Allah Ta'ala three moments on anger and when you are sad and when you are afraid. Because it is moments of weakness of man where jinn can overcome man. So when you are angry, you say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. When you are sad, you say, Inna Lillahi Wa Inna Ilayhi Rajeeun. And when you are afraid, you say, Allahumma Inna Na'udhu Bika Min Shururihim. Wa Inna Na'udhu Bika Min Shururihim. Wa Naj'aluka Fi Nuhurihim. And uh, also you must say Bismillah when you cross water, especially dirty water, or if you throw something in water, especially hot boiling water, if you have made tea or spaghetti or rice, and you throw the water, you must always say Bismillah, so you don't have problems with the genes. Uh, also, if you do any sins, so all the protections will go away. You cannot disobey to Allah and Allah will still protect you. For example, Rasulullah said, if you go out of the house, you say Bismillah, the angels will protect you and shaitan, shaitan will run away from you. But if you go out of the house, you make dua, then you start looking at women. So angels are going to leave you and shaitan is going to come back with you and if it is a woman which is not veiled as islam asks so also it, um, angels are going to leave her and shaitan is coming back with her so this is why the first and most important of all protections is to leave sins first and after that the dua and dhikr and everything is going to give you strength uh, spiritual strength so that these things will not approach you and in the end there is not something you can uh, uh, hold or keep or attach with you or put in your house or in your car that will protect you it is only your deeds your prayer your dua your dhikr your piousness as rasulullah said uh, as the Rasulullah said, Ihfad Allah, Yahfadka, Ihfad Allah, Tajidu Tujah. Keep Allah, keep the religion of Allah. Allah will keep you, protect you, and keep Allah, you will find Him with you. And now the last point, brothers, is shirk. So there are kinds of shirk that are widespread in Muslims societies and this is very very I mean it is very very sad and it's four kinds of shirk the first one is sacrifices for jinns so any kinds of sacrifice for jinns giving animals slaughtering animals or pouring milk or lighting candles in a, in a, uh, outside in graves or whatever all this is shirk so if you are told to kill a black goat or black chicken this is for jinns because Allah Ta'ala can cure you through sadaqa but this sadaqa why should it be a black goat or black chicken that is the requirements of jinns and when you are doing it for jinns even if you say bismillah you do all the Islamic way but it is still shirk because jinns have required it and you are doing it for them so this is one the second one is using the names of jinns in in uh, in dhikr or in dua or in 
writing uh, using the names of jinns for example there is some writing some dua you find inside ilahi bi hurmati yamlikha maksalima kashfut fatyanus daqyanus this and that wa kalbihim qatmir oh my god i ask you by the value of yamlikha maksalima kashfut daqyanus and their dog qatmir and they say it is the cave people the cave the seven uh, the seven youngsters in the in the calf in the cave uh, and their dog and subhanallah how can you know the names of the seven people of the cave and what, even if it is the people of the cave what is the purpose of asking Allah wa ta'ala by those names we don't even say that Allah I ask you by the by the value of Muhammad and Nuh and Ibrahim and Musa and Isa why should we go to those people and their dog Qatmir how can you say ya Allah I'm asking you to protect me by the virtue of this dog that has been died 2000 years ago uh, is this does this make any sense how can you ask Allah about the value of a dog and it is all names of shayateen there is no calf people inside it is only shayateen those names and all kind of names you can find uh, may Allah Ta'ala protect us it never use those names no never make dhikr there is no secret names of Allah Ta'ala as in some places you find Ya Badduh Ya Badduh and this is jinn we have met him in you maybe have seen that on YouTube uh, it is jinns that people worship and someone told me it is name of Allah in Aramean language what do you need Aramean language to worship Allah say Ya Badduh you don't know even who you're calling you think you're calling Allah then you start saying Subhana Badduh Subhana uh, and you think that is Allah and that is not Allah may Allah Ta'ala protect us I just give you one example we have so 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 many examples of this kind there is one boy he told me that he got some names of jinns in his dream and when he puts that in Quran uh, he gets lots of money I said how do you put that in Quran he says he says Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Ya Jibreel Ar Rahman Ar Rahim Ya this and that Maliki Yawm Din Ya such uh, this and that Say, why are you saying this? He, say, he says, this makes your prayer to be accepted. I said, subhanallah, you're asking someone else than Allah to accept your prayer. But well, this is the pure shirk. You're praying someone else than Allah to accept you. This is the opposite. We say, Iyaka na'budu. And now you're worshipping someone else. Uh, I said, just watch. We're going to bring those jinns. So we brought them by the power of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. And they become Muslim. They were not Muslim. They were, they were, they were shayateen. And that jinn told me. He told me, Abd Rauf, there's a name of Allah that Muslims don't know. I said, which one? He said, Al-Wahid, the one. And that is why they worship someone else than Allah. You see, if we don't understand that Allah is one and we go to worship someone else than, than Allah. So what did we get of Islam? What did we understand of Islam? Worshipping someone else than Allah. May Allah help us.